Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and today on Tips and Techniques, we're gonna get into how to grill a steak on a pellet grill. We're getting back to basics. We're talking pellet grilling 101, how to grill a steak. So if you're brand new to a pellet grill or you're just curious about what pellet grills can do, this should be a good demonstration, one of a pellet grill's capabilities and two, how to get all the flavor, texture, and color that you want out of your steak. The first thing we're gonna talk about is grilling setups. We'll be grilling our steaks on two different Yoder Smokers pellet grills today so that we can demonstrate two different techniques. Uh, the first grill we've got here is the YS640S and then the smaller YS480S. Now this first setup, we'll get in here so you can see this, it's gonna be a direct setup. Both of them are direct. If you've got a diffuser, take it out of the grill because every time I'm grilling something high heat, I wanna get that food as close to the flame as possible. Now, where we are gonna vary a little bit here is on the 640, we're actually gonna use our grill grate grilling panels. So these are raised ridge. They give you those beautiful cross hatch marks that you like to see on a steak. And they let some of that flame through just to kiss the surface. The other setup that we're gonna do is gonna be on a cast iron griddle and that'll give you the full surface sear. Here's the direct setup with the grill grate panels. You can see that flames lipping up through the holes. Now, while you could cook a steak on just about any pellet grill, one of the advantages you have with the Yoder is it's literally designed to do this, to be so versatile that not only can you smoke and cook in it like an oven, but high heat grilling over here. And there's ways to get around that if you're cooking on a different grill, and we'll, we'll talk about some of those troubleshooting methods later. Next, we have the griddle setup. Once again, no diffuser, flames in that same spot. So this right here is gonna be nice and hot. This has been preheating at 450, I don't know, for about 20 minutes, and that temperature is up above 500 degrees right in the middle. Obviously, there's more than two ways to cook a steak, but remember, we're doing Pellet Grill 101 here, and these are two of the simplest methods, so these are what we're gonna stick with today. Now that we've talked about the setups, let's go ahead and get our steaks prepped and ready to go on the grill. We're gonna cook some strip steaks today because they're widely available, and I know a lot of you are out there buying them already anyway. These happen to be some really nice, Creekstone Farms Prime strip steaks. But I'm always happy to cook one of these. You can see they've got great marbling. That's one of the things you wanna look for in a strip steak. I also see this, it's got a pretty healthy fat cap up here. And that actually might cause some problems as far as uh, flare ups and grease and all that. So we, we're just gonna trim that down just a little bit. A little is great, a lot is not so great. If you ever have a huge, just hard chunk of fat on there, Go ahead and just trim it down a little bit. Now we'll season this one up for the grill grates. That means it's gonna have a little bit more direct flame on it, but not so much surface contact. And because of that, that changes the way that we season it just a little bit. So I'm gonna hit this with just a little bit of duck fat, although you could use mustard or sriracha or oil or whatever you've got around. And then we're gonna hit this with a nice, chunky steak rub. We've got the Cattleman's Grill Roadhouse. And when you're grilling on grates and you've got some room in between those grates, it's all right to have some of these uh, chunkier, a little bit more texture, textured rubs. But when it comes to cooking on a griddle, if I put this on a griddle, these big chunks would just immediately scorch and you're gonna taste that. So we're gonna break down this rub a little finer for the next steak. Now my recommendation here is either choose a finer rub or use your chunky textured rub, but break it down in a spice grinder. Phenomil will do the job. Again, I'm gonna just hit that with a little bit of fat. Now that more powdery texture there just kind of melts into the meat and won't scorch. So once this looks a little bit moistened on the surface, you'll know that that's attached and it's ready to go to the grill. This took about five minutes. I'm gonna make sure that our grates are well oiled, so I'm gonna put a little bit of avo avocado oil on our rag here and just hit that surface. We'll go right over that flame. 
At this point, we can close up the lid and wait for our grill marks to form. Now for the griddle, again, we'll get a little bit of avocado oil down just to prevent that rub from sticking. And again, we're at 450 degrees on both of these grills. So that's kind of going in that hot spot. We're gonna get a great sear on here. Let's also close the lid on this one. So this is right around four minutes now. Starting to get some nice marks on there. So what I'll do now, it's we'll make that cross hatch, turn it. You also could have just flipped it right there. Um, just don't confuse yourself on the cross hatch design. <laughs> it happens. It's been about another three minutes now. Oh yeah, that is looking good. So another great tip, if you want to get a little bit darker marks is move it to a slightly different spot where it wasn't sitting before because those grates have not had meat on them in this spot just yet. But beyond that, you're getting great crispiness in between as well because of that flame coming up in between the grill grate holes. And just for a reference point, since we've flipped it, I wanna know where we're at on our temperature, 105. We're gonna aim for about 120 to 125 for a finishing. So for now, I'll leave the lid open to make sure that we get all the color on the bottom that we want before the internal temperature surpasses that 120 to 125. Let's go check on the griddle. We're about six minutes in on this one. And boy, look at that. We're getting a nice crisp all the way across. We move that over to a hot spot. And again, just gonna leave the door open to let the internal climb. One more turn here. Back in a hot spot. And our temp has dropped a little bit because it's so cold outside. So let's just close the door and let it finish off. Now that internals climbed to 125. It's been about nine minutes. We're gonna pull this off and let it rest. All right, so about 11 or 12 minutes on this grill grate steak. So it's taken just a little bit longer, but then again, no two steaks are the same. This one could be a little thinner. It's all a matter of time and temperature and size. Now, while these steaks are resting, I wanna talk briefly about managing the different ways to open the door, close the door. What, what do you do when? So typically for me, I'll keep the door closed early on until I see where that internal temperature is landing. And then if I wanna make sure that I get some more color before the internal temperature overshoots where I'm going for, I'll open that door up. And the vice versa, exact same thing. If you need that internal temperature to climb, close that door down, trap that heat in there so that you're not gonna blacken the surface before the internal gets to where you want. Every steak is different. The most important thing to know is cook to temperature, not to time. So you can disregard, I said nine minutes or 11 minutes. It's gonna be different on every grill with every piece of meat. So always have your thermometer handy. Know your finishing temperatures. 120, 125 is gonna give you mid rare and honestly the more you do this on your grill the more familiar you're going to be with the process let's go ahead and slice into these steaks well first we have our griddle cooked steak listen to that great crust on the outside this is really a great technique for getting that full sear you got a little bark that you got to work your way through now that's the texture we got the color let's see if we got the flavor Ooh. Juicy, warm pink center. Let's get a bite. Oh man, so juicy. Just the right amount of saltiness on the outside. I love that steak rub. I'm a little biased because I designed it, but it's got great garlic flavor. It's got a little bit of chipotle in it, a little bit of cumin, brings the Southwest flavors. Mm, perfect for beef. And now for our direct grilled on the grill grates. Still got a crust, not quite as crunchy as the other one, but we got these big chunks that have kind of formed a bark on the surface of the steak. A little bit more of a pink center on that one, but that's kind of right, right where I like it. Oh man. That's just right for me. I have to say, with that larger size grind on there, the flavor seems to be a little bit more intense, which maybe just means I could have put a little bit more seasoning on the griddle. But I love this flavor, and 
the doneness is just right. These are easy steps and a great way to get a steak done in no time at all. I mean, it really is 101. This is where you start. From here, from here you can get creative. From here, maybe you start to do a reverse sear or a, a pan fry where you can actually baste some butter over the top. Which reminds me, as we mentioned earlier, not all pellet grills are created equally. Uh, the Yoders do a great job at grilling, some don't. So if you're looking to grill a steak on a pellet grill, grill where you struggle to sear, my best advice for you is give it a smoke for a while or a roast and then bust out a skillet and get it just screaming hot and sear it to finish. So bring that temperature up to about 105 or so and then just finish it off with a quick sear and cast iron and you'll get great results that way as well. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the video, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue or barbecue legends are made.